What you're looking at here is the Cintiq Pro 24. It is one of Wacom's top of the line drawing displays and today we're gonna be reviewing it. This unit was provided to me by Wacom for this review. However, this is not a sponsored video. So like all of my reviews, the opinions here are my own. So what is this? It is a pen display. It is a giant pen display. Think of it like a computer monitor that sits in your desk that you plug into your Windows or Mac computer and you can draw on it using the included pen. Like the name says, it has a 24 inch screen, but that's just the screen. The device itself is gigantic. It takes up most of my desk. It's so big that it's hard to film. I shouldn't complain because that's kind of the best problem I've ever had. The actual dimensions corner to corner are more like 30 inches. There's a lot of extra space around the sides. It seems like every device nowadays is trying to get rid of as much of the edges around their devices as possible, letting it go screen to screen. But here, I think the bezels are a good thing. So all you bezel snarks out there, calm down. <laughs> I've used some displays that don't have much edge around the screen and when you're drawing, your hand will slip off the edge or it'll get caught. It's not something you want to happen when you're trying to get a smooth line or trying to hit all those tools that are lined up along the side of the screen. So in this case, all of that extra space actually serves a functional purpose. Also on these newer displays, Wacom has been doing away with the express keys and instead including their handy dandy express key remotes. These things are incredibly flexible. I mean, flexible in terms of being programmable. It's also flexible in terms of being able to put it anywhere you want. You can have it off the display, you can put it directly on the display, on the left side, on the right side, you just move it around. It's also magnetized with a rubbery grip roll on the bottom. It really grips to the display. You're not going to just knock it off with your hand. Well, you can knock it off, but you know what I mean. But like I said before, it is uber customizable. It has a ton of buttons. There's different modes. It's customizable for separate programs. You can really go to town with this thing. And it plugs back into the tablet to recharge and you can use it while you're doing that. The 24 inch screen is a high density display displayed is full 4K, that's 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels, not pickles. Wacom is the only company out there right now making screens at this high of a resolution for pen displays. Unlike a normal monitor, which usually sits back a little bit, you're hovering over this, so you can see all of those details. It makes a big difference, it's much crisper. And another thing Wacom has done is they've reduced the amount of space between the glass and the screen below it. And once you get it calibrated, it really does take away that parallax effect that you get on some displays. I don't know a whole lot about color and profile, but this does have a 99% Adobe RGB gambit, and the colors look really good right out of the box. You're probably gonna notice along the top, there's also some light up icons. These are touch buttons that only light up when the display is turned on. You can do things like bring up the screen's properties, an on-screen keyboard, or the Wacom settings. There's also a touch icon that lets you toggle on and off the touch mode on the display. You can get this Cintiq with touch controls or without touch controls. The one that I'm reviewing here does have touch. It does cost more. In fact, it costs a lot more to get the touch option. And after using it for a couple days, I don't think the touch is a good fit for me. I'm gonna dive into the touch features a little bit later on in this video because first, I really wanted to talk about what I do the most on this tablet, which is draw with it. It is using Wacom's newest Pro Pen 2, which I've used several times now on the latest version of the Intuos and the Mobile Studio Pro. This pen feels really good. It checks all the boxes for me in terms of functionality. As you'd expect, you get your 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. It has full tilt support. It doesn't require any batteries or never has to be charged. And in a nutshell, it feels really great to draw with. Sometimes the feeling of drawing with a pen can be hard to put into words. It's the kind of feeling I get when I'm drawing with the Apple Pencil. Occasionally I'll get that kind of feeling with a third party device, but not very often. They're good, but not great. This feels great. It doesn't feel like I'm drawing on paper necessarily, but the pen feels exactly the way I want it to feel when I'm drawing on a computer. The lines are super smooth, the pressure feels perfectly calibrated, and it's really hard to describe exactly what makes it feel so good. I feel like the rat in Ratatouille trying to explain how food tastes. Wacom is one of those devices I grade pens against. I get really smooth lines, pressure feels good. The only thing that I could ding this pen for in my normal pen test is that it blobs up a little bit if you're drawing super fast hash lines, but slowing it down a little bit cleans that right up. The texture you're drawing on also feels really good. Wacom calls it etched glass. I'm not sure if it's actually glass that's etched or if that's just what they call the coating on it, but it does give you a little bit of texture and it does feel really good to draw on. When you're drawing on the screen, it does get warm. Not hot, just kind of warm. This time of year, I like it because my office is a little bit cold, but in the summer, I would probably wear a drawing glove so that my hand doesn't stick. 
The other thing that you will definitely notice is that it has a fan in it. The fan doesn't run all the time, but occasionally it kicks in for a couple seconds at a time. I timed it once and it usually blows for about 20 seconds every couple minutes. It's not super loud, but you'll definitely notice it. It sits at a pretty comfortable angle for drawing. It has legs, but no stand. There is a really awesome ergo stand that Wacom offers. I watched a demo of it, it looks great, but it also costs extra. In fact, it's considerably extra. Setup was pretty easy. The Cintiq comes with a whole bunch of cables that let you hook it up. You can go the HDMI and USB route. I decided to try the old USB-C cable since it will drive the display and the functionality all in one cord. In order to set it up, you have to pull off this back plate. At first, it feels like it might break off when you take it off, but it is designed to pop in and out. The reason there's a plate and this big backspace back here is there's something called the Cintiq engine. It is a full blown Windows PC that you can buy extra and you slide it into the back and it fits right in there. It basically turns this thing into something like an iMac or an all in one Windows computer. I don't have one of these engines to test. So I'm not looking at that today, but I thought they were pretty cool. The Cintiq display should outlast whatever computer you're plugging it into. So being able to like swap one directly in and out of the Cintiq itself is a pretty cool idea. Now the Cintiq engine is kind of expensive and I wouldn't be surprised if some enterprising PC maker comes along and makes something more affordable that fits into this space. Now one of the bigger gripes I see in the comment section about Wacom are the drivers. So what were my experiences installing this? Overall it was really smooth. When I set this up I uninstalled the last tablet I tested which was the Veek 1560 and then I installed these drivers. I rebooted my computer, got in there, booted up Photoshop and it worked perfectly. I did that both on Windows and on my Mac and I've had zero problems that worked exactly the way I expected it to. As a reviewer, it's really hard to judge these kind of technical issues. If you go to a forum or a Reddit page, it's hard to tell if there are a handful of isolated conflicts that people are talking about there or if it's a widespread issue that affects everybody. But my personal experience with Wacom devices has been very positive. They've been very easy to set up and they've needed very little or no fiddling. So let's get over to those pros and cons. So the pros I've mostly covered. First of all, it's huge and it's beautiful. There's little or no parallax. There's lots of pixels. This is really top of the line. It does come with a hefty price tag, but if you're willing to pay for the best, you know that you're getting the best. I also just love drawing with Wacom's pen. I still hold them up as my gold standard for drawing. This is no different. It's, it's an amazing drawing experience. But what about the cons? What are some of the things that I would like to see improved? There is one big thing here I really didn't like, and that is the touch features. It just picked up my palm far too much. I was always accidentally rotating the screen or toggling off a layer with my palm. It was really nice to pinch and zoom and pan around my drawing, so having those features there aren't a bad idea. And Wacom makes it super easy to toggle the touch on and off. I ended up trying a workflow where if I needed to zoom around or pan around my drawing, I would just reach up and toggle on and off the touch mode. And then I would pan and zoom and then I'd turn it off and continue to draw. But after a few minutes, I figured I might as well just use the express keys to do that kind of stuff because it's faster. And since the remote itself is so nice, it's just a better workflow. There are some nice things that you could do with touch, especially when you're using this on Windows, since Windows is specifically built for touch inputs. Having that touch screen keyboard right there was really nice. Being able to navigate folders and, and that sort of thing worked better in my workflow on Windows. Really the only time it got in my way was when I was drawing. So this might be something that photographers can really appreciate or if you're doing video editing. But for me, an illustration, I think that extra $500 for the touch mode just, just isn't quite worth it. Now the rest of my cons are more nitpicks or things I just prefer. So one thing you should be aware of is that the coating on this thing, the etched glass, refracts the light. So when you get in really close to the screen, you're going to notice that a little bit. For me, this isn't a con. For some people, it will be. The etched glass is going to dull the colors a little bit, but the positive side is that that texture actually feels really good to draw in. So like I said, it's a trade-off. Some people won't care. I'm one of those people who actually likes making that trade-off, but it is something that I did want to mention in the context of this review. If you're looking for those super specific colors, this etched glass coating might not be the best fit for you. I also mentioned the fan on this. It keeps the display from ever getting too hot, so that's a good thing, but you can hear it. It's not crazy loud, but it's definitely there. And lastly, there is no stand or mount. There are those legs, but that only props it up so much. I know that in the past, I've used the larger drawing displays that I've reviewed as monitors, so when I'm not drawing, 
drawing on them, I'll just prop them up on my stand, push them back, and I'll just use them as a monitor for my computer. In order to do that here, I would have to invest quite a bit in, in an arm mount of some kind of thing or get the ergo stand, that sort of thing. Ultimately, what we're talking about here with the Cintiq Pro 24 is that you are getting the best. You are paying for quality. And as far as drawing experience goes, I think it totally nails it. And if you spend your entire day drawing and you have the money to invest in something like this, you know that you're getting a great product. So that is the Cintiq Pro 24. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. That is all I have for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you in a couple of days.